Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am Gaurav Dhawan Lal and with me is Saira Mujtaba with the evening news. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi asks BJP mayors to focus on planned urban development, better transport facilities and cleanliness in their cities. India to be driven more and more by digitization of banking and related services says finance minister Nirmala Sitharaman road transport minister Nitin Gadkari emphasizes maintaining equilibrium between ecology environment and development in the country India and Egypt sign MOU to bolster defense cooperation across all sectors of mutual interest Central Bureau of Narcotics destroys 1032 hectares of illicit cultivation of cannabis in Himachal Pradesh UN General Assembly to take decisive action to end spiraling global hunger crisis and in T20 cricket first match of three match series between India and Australia underway at Mohali Prime Minister Narendra Modi has urged mayors of the BJP led municipal corporations to focus on holistic development of their cities and give priority to ease of living addressing a two day BJP mayors conclave at Gandhi Nagar through video conferencing the prime minister asked the mayors to focus on planned urban development building economic centers better urban transport housing and cleanliness in their cities aajadi ke amrit kaal mein agle 25 varsh ke liye भारत के शहरी विकास का एक रोड मैप बनाने में भी इस सम्मेलन की बड़ी भूमिका है हमारे देश के नागरिकों ने बहुत लंबे सर शहरों के विकास को लेकर भाजपा पर जो विश्वास रखा है उसे निरंतर बनाए रखना हम सभी का दायित्व है द प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेड वर्क ऑन मोर देन 1000 किलोमीटर्स ऑफ द मेट्रो रेल नेटवर्क इज गोइंग ऑन इन द कंट्री 2014 तक हमारे देश में मेट्रो नेटवर्क 250 किलोमीटर से भी कम था आज देश में मेट्रो नेटवर्क 775 किलोमीटर से भी ज्यादा हो चुका है 1000 किलोमीटर के नए मेट्रो रूट पर आज काम चल रहा है द प्राइम मिनिस्टर आस्क देम टू वर्क फॉर द बेटरमेंट ऑफ देयर सिटीज थ्रू पीपल्स पार्टिसिपेशन ही सेड that municipal corporations are closely connected with the day-to-day -day lives of people so it is the responsibility of the mayors to gain the trust of citizens aapko bhi apne shaharon ko us tar par le jana hai ki aane wali peediyan aapko yaad karke kahe ki ha hamare shahar mein ek mayor hua karte the tab itna bada parivartan aaya tha sabka saath sabka vikas sabka vishwas aur सबका प्रयास ये जो वैचारिक परिपाटी भाजपा ने अपनाई है यही हमारे गवर्नेंस मॉडल को दूसरों से अलग करता है मिस्टर मोदी सेड दैट द बीजेपी गवर्नमेंट इज फोकसिंग ऑन बिल्डिंग स्मार्ट कम्युनिटीज इन द सिटीज ही आस्क द मेयर्स टू वर्क फॉर द बेटरमेंट ऑफ द अर्बन पुअर एंड टेक देयर सिटीज टू अ लेवल वेयर फ्यूचर जनरेशन विल रिमेम्बर देयर वर्क speaking on the occasion party president jagat prakash nadda said that the bjp has come into politics to serve people not to sit in power he said power is a medium for us and the aim is service hum rajneeti mein aaye hain to sirf gaddi par baithte nahi aaye hain satta par baithte nahi aaye satta hamare liye madhyam hai laksh hamara seva hai aur us seva ke liye हम सब कार्य में जुटे हैं और इसलिए सुशासन के माध्यम से किस तरीके से सामान्य जन की हम सेवा कर सकते हैं और उनको लाभ पहुंचा सकते हैं इसके लिए हम काम करते हैं गुजरात चीफ मिनिस्टर भूपेंद्र पटेल एंड बीजेपी स्टेट यूनिट चीफ सी आर पाटिल व प्रेजेंट ऑन द ओकेजन मोर देन 100 मेयर्स एंड डेप्यूटी मेयर्स ऑफ द बीजेपी रूल्ड म्यूनिसिपल कॉरपोरेशन अक्रॉस द कंट्री पार्टिसिपेटेड इन द कॉन्क्लेव Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman has said that the future of finance in India is going to be driven more and more by the digitization of banking and related services. She said that digitization has helped bring greater ease of financial services in terms of banks, financial institutions and customers and it will be further strengthened in the next 25 years. 
Ms. Sida Raman said this while addressing the third edition of the KEEDS program on the theme Future of Finance, organized by FICI in New Delhi. She mentioned that the global average of fintech adoption is 64%, while it is 87% in India. I already spoke about how India has shown the way in our people adapting technology. Even on that, the data is so explicit. While the global average for fintech adoption is about 64%, India's number is 87%. So absolutely across the board, adopting technology is done by all our people. So the progress in terms of digital is only going to be even further accentuated. Talking about the growth of UPI transactions, the Finance Minister informed that the Unified Payments Interface UPI has reported 6.28 billion transactions worth 10.62 trillion rupees in July this year, showing a growth of 7% from last month. Today, the authentication exercise is lots more electronically driven. The Aadhaar could have been one to start with, where you're not physically expected to be somewhere where your Aadhaar can substitute for you. Payments are also not necessarily to be done by cash or you being physically present. That's why you have the UPI, Rupe. So digital is now moving layer after layer where your physical presence wasn't required. The minister added that on a monthly basis, the country is witnessing substantial growth in UPI transactions. She also mentioned that UPI has also set up a target to process 1 billion transactions per day in the next five years. The Reserve Bank said it is not interested in penalizing operators or stifling innovation, but wants them to follow the rules of the game. Addressing the third edition of the Global Fintech Summit in Mumbai today, RBI Governor Shakti Kanda said the intention of the central bank is not to penalize or stifle anyone, but to ensure that everyone follows traffic rules. He said, while innovations are very much welcome, they should be responsible and benefit consumers. The statement assumes importance in the wake of the recent incidences wherein a few people who borrowed through these apps have been forced to commit suicide and the last week's incidents of a young pregnant woman being mowed down by the recovery agents of Mahindra Finance, which financed her father's tractor in Bihar. The Employees Provident Fund Organization, or EPFO, added 18,23,000 net members in July this year, registering a growth of 24.48% in comparison to the same month last year. The provisional payroll data of EPFO reflects that more than 10 lakh new members out of 18.23 lakh members have come under the Social Security cover of EPFO for the first time. Road Transport and Highways Minister Nitin Gadkari today said that India needs development and, at the same time, the protection of the ecology and environment. Speaking at an event in New Delhi on climate goals, the minister said that today India imports 14 to 16 lakh crore rupees of fossil fuel, which is not only an environmental but also an economic burden. Mr. Gadkari said to fulfill Prime Minister Narendra Modi's dream for an Atmanirbhar Bharat, finding options to reduce imports is the need of the hour. The minister also highlighted proven technology, economic viability, availability of raw materials and marketability of the product as four important pillars to writing India's success story in Atmanirbharta. India and Egypt have agreed to identify proposals for expanding cooperation between the defense industries of the two countries in a time-bound manner. Raksha Mantri Rajnath Singh held bilateral talks with his Egyptian counterpart, General Mohammed Zaki, in Cairo yesterday. Both sides discussed steps to strengthen defense ties and reach a consensus to enhance the conduct of joint exercises and exchange of personnel for training, especially in the field of counterinsurgency. The two ministers also exchanged views on regional security and acknowledged the contribution of India and Egypt to peace and stability in the world. Both the ministers agreed to consolidate and focus on enhancing the security and defense aspects of bilateral cooperation. They also signed an MOU on cooperation in the field of defense to pave the way for enhancing defense cooperation across all sectors of mutual interest. 
In a tweet, Mr. Singh said, the signing of the MOU adds new impetus and synergy to India-Egypt relations. He also invited his Egyptian counterpart to the India-Africa Defence Dialogue and IOR Defence Minister's Conclave, scheduled to be held as a part of the 12th Defence Expo in Gandhinagar next month. Mr. Singh also called on the President of Egypt, Mr. Abdel Fattah el-Sisi, yesterday. Union Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh reached New York this evening en route to Washington on the first leg of his five-day U.S. visit. During the tour, he will participate in the Global Clean Energy Action Forum scheduled from the 21st to the 23rd of September in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The minister was received by senior Indian embassy officials at the JFK airport. After this, he left for Washington, D.C. to hold an important roundtable with senior executives of about 35 companies and federal representatives associated with geospatial, space, earth and ocean science, pharma and biotech sectors. Our correspondent reports that the minister is leading a high-level joint Indian ministerial official delegation of the Ministry of Power, New and Renewable Energy and Ministry of Science and Technology to participate in the Global Clean Energy Action Forum. He will also interact with eminent academicians as well as the Indian diaspora. Minister of State for External Affairs V. Murali Dharan will pay an official visit to Djibouti from tomorrow. During his two-day visit, the minister will call on the Prime Minister of Djibouti, Abdul Khadir Kamil Mohammed, and will host talks with Foreign Minister Mahmoud Ali Yusuf on the issues of mutual interest. He will also interact with the Indian community in Djibouti. The External Affairs Minister said an agreement on the exemption from visa requirement for holders of diplomatic, official and service passports is to be signed during the visit. Besides an MOU between the Sushma Swaraj Institute of Foreign Service and the Institute of Diplomatic Studies of Djibouti will also be signed. India's presidency of the prestigious Asia-Pacific Institute of Broadcasting Development has been extended for one more year. This was unanimously decided by the AIBD member countries at the two-day general conference held in New Delhi. Currently, the Chief Executive Officer of Prasar Bharti and Director General of Doordarshan, Mayank Kumar Agarwal, is the President of AIBD. The conference was inaugurated by Information and Broadcasting Minister Anurag Singh Thakur yesterday. The Minister of State for Information and Broadcasting, Dr. L. Murugan, also graced the occasion. Secretary of the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, Apurva Chandra, and other officials were also present. World leaders will begin their high-level meeting of the UN General Assembly today. Global polarization, the Russia-Ukraine conflict, food and energy crisis, economic problems and natural disasters are likely to dominate the agenda. A watershed moment, transformative solutions to interlocking challenges is the theme of this year's meeting. Reform of the UN Security Council is expected to get renewed attention during the meeting. It will be high on India's External Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar's agenda when he meets with leaders from around the world and when he participates in two meetings focused on the reforms. As world leaders are meeting at the 77th UN General Assembly today to take decisive action to end the spiraling global hunger crisis, over 200 civil society organizations from 75 countries have signed an open letter expressing outrage at skyrocketing hunger levels and recommendations for immediate action. In a statement, the organization said a staggering 345 million people are now experiencing acute hunger, a number that has more than doubled since 2019. Agriculture and Farmers Welfare Minister Narendra Singh Tomar has said that the country can meet the food requirements of a large part of the world as India is moving fast to become a world leader in the agriculture sector. Mr. Tomar virtually addressed the Leeds 2022 conference organized by the Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry, FICI, in New Delhi today. In the session on food for all farm to fork, the minister said, the country's agriculture sector has registered a growth of 3.9% despite the COVID pandemic. He informed agriculture has expanded significantly in the country in recent years under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The minister said India has emerged as the second largest food producer in the world and its agricultural exports crossed the 4 lakh crore rupees mark. The Central Bureau of Narcotics has destroyed 1,032 hectares of illicit cannabis cultivation in Himachal Pradesh. The Finance Ministry said in a release that officers of the Central Bureau of Narcotics destroyed the illicit cannabis cultivation 
in one of the biggest destruction operations conducted in over two weeks. During this operation, a two-pronged approach of creating awareness among villagers along with enforcement was adopted. Community mobilization was adopted by sensitizing villagers about the adverse effects of drugs on the body and mind. Threats that drugs tend to pose to the future of youth and children were explained. The CBN has conducted destruction operations in many states like West Bengal, Jammu and Kashmir, Arunachal Pradesh, Manipur and Uttarakhand. This has resulted in the destruction of more than 25,000 hectares of illicit cultivation of opium and cannabis over the years. The CBN has also destroyed approximately 3,600 hectares of illicit opium in Arunachal Pradesh in February and March this year. The Petroleum and Natural Gas Ministry today said that media reports stating that Oil Ministry seeks windfall tax review are misleading. The report said that the Ministry has sought changes in the levy of Special Additional Excise Duty, SAED. The Ministry clarified that the levy of SAED from the 1st of July this year was accompanied by the Government's announcement of a mechanism of fortnightly review. Six such reviews have already taken place since the levy of SAED. The Petroleum Ministry said that selective leakage of any such communication without the knowledge of context, background or communications gives a misleading impression and provides an incomplete picture. It further said such mischievous reporting is uncalled for and raises doubts about the motive behind such reporting. You're listening to the Evening News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi asked BJP mayors to focus on planned urban development, better transport facility and cleanliness in their cities. India to be driven more and more by digitization of banking and related services, says Finance Minister Nirmala Sita Raman. Road Transport Minister Nitin Gadkari emphasizes on maintaining equilibrium between ecology, environment and development in the country. India and Egypt sign an MOU to bolster defense cooperation across all sectors of mutual interest. Central Bureau of Narcotics destroys 1,032 hectares of illicit cultivation of cannabis in Himachal Pradesh. UN General Assembly to take decisive action to end spiraling global hunger crisis. And in T20 cricket, India set a target of 209 runs before Australia in the first T20 international match of the three-mass series being played in Mohali. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on Twitter at TIA News Alerts. उपभोक्ताओं तक पहुंचने का सुलभ और सस्ता माध्यम है आकाशवाणी। आकाशवाणी के विभिन्न केंद्रों से कीजिए अपने उत्पादों और सेवाओं का प्रचार विज्ञापनों के माध्यम से। लोकल और राष्ट्रीय स्तर पर कीजिए अपने बिजनेस का विस्तार क्योंकि आकाशवाणी में विज्ञापन बुकिंग हुई बहुत ही आसान। अब घर, दफ्तर या दुकान पर बैठे-बैठे आप कर सकते हैं विज्ञापनों की बुकिंग। डायल कीजिए 8700001422 नंबर एक बार फिर नोट करें 8700001422 न्यू इंडिया समाचार नए भारत का संकल्प सबका साथ सबका विकास सबका विश्वास और सबका प्रयास समाज में गरीब और कमजोर तबकों के लिए सरकार की चल रही कल्याणकारी योजनाओं और कार्यक्रमों से जुड़ी जानकारी पाएं सरकार के इन कदमों के बारे में जानें और लाभ उठाएं आकाशवाणी पर अब सुनिए जन कल्याण के सरोकार दोपहर 3 बजे से हर शनिवार सुनिए न्यू इंडिया समाचार आकाशवाणी के साथ वेलकम बैक टू द इवनिंग न्यूज़ वाइस प्रेसिडेंट जगदीप धनकर हैज सेड द डिसिप्लिन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन लेजिस्लेचर्स एंड पार्लियामेंट मिस्टर धनकर वाज फेलिसिटेटेड इन द स्टेट लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली ऑफ राजस्थान टुडे इन हिज एड्रेस टू अ फंक्शन organized by state legislative assembly the vice president said that parliament and legislature are a reflection of the aspirations of the people along with the wishes of the people vidhan sabha mein vyavdhan paida karna hamesha satta paksh ke paksh mein jata hai kisi bhi vidhan sabha ko le lijiye aur jo main tipne kar raha hu ki rajasthan vidhan sabha ke sambandh mein bilkul nahi hai house nahi chalega vyavdhan hoga there will be no discussion on the bill it will be passed as such नतीजा क्या होगा उसमें जो सुधार हो सकता है नया विचार आ सकता है वो सामने नहीं आएगा और एक अच्छा काम अधूरा रह जाएगा इसको ध्यान देना 
बहुत जरूरी है बीजेपी चीफ जे पी नड्डा इज आस्ट पार्टी वर्कर्स टू बी प्रोएक्टिव रिस्पॉन्सिबल एंड ट्रांसपेरेंट इन ऑर्डर टू ब्रिंग अबाउट चेंज इन सोसायटी एड्रेसिंग द इलेक्टेड रिप्रेजेंटेटिव ऑफ द पार्टी एट राजकोट इन गुजरात मिस्टर नड्डा सेड वर्क डन बाय द गुजरात बीजेपी टू स्ट्रेंथन द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ द पार्टी एट द ग्रास रूट लेवल हैज बिकम अ गाइड फॉर द बीजेपी एट द नेशनल लेवल मिस्टर नड्डा ऑल्सो प्रेज द सोशल सर्विस रेंडर्ड बाय बीजेपी वर्कर्स ज्यूरिंग द कोविड नाइन्टीन पैंडेमिक state bjp president cr patil said around 82 lakh party workers have become members of page committees mr nadda also held road shows in rajkot and morbi cities today earlier in the day mr nadda was addressing farmers of the bjp kisan morcha and flagged off e bikes at the bjp's kisan morcha event near gandhinagar this morning These e-bikes will travel to more than 14,000 villages covering all the assembly constituencies of the state and spread awareness about farmer centric initiatives of the government. He also inaugurated the 2-day BJP Mayors Conclave in Gandhinagar today. Tomorrow the BJP president will hold meetings with senior Gujarat BJP leaders at the party headquarters Sri Kamalam in Gandhinagar. The 12th session of the 13th Nagaland Legislative Assembly NLA commenced today. NLA speaker Sharingan Longkumar welcomed the members and expressed hope for fruitful deliberations for the last session of the house before the state goes to polls early next year. Over the past 75 years since independence, India's largest public service broadcaster, All India Radio, has been the proverbial storyteller for crores of people across the country. AIR is celebrating 75 years of freedom with the series Azad Bharat ki Baat Aakashwani ke saath. The series showcases the journey of India since independence in various walks of life through the storytelling of All India Radio. In today's episode, we will bring you the story of Civil Aviation Ministry's Regional Connectivity Scheme Ulan. Ule desh ka aam nagrik. Civil Aviation Ministry had launched its Regional Connectivity Scheme Uran Ure Desh ka Aam Nagrik on 27th of April 2017 Prime Minister Narendra Modi said this scheme aims to fulfill the aspirations of the common citizen by following the vision of Ure Desh ka Aam Nagrik with an enhanced aviation infrastructure and air connectivity in tier 2 and tier 3 cities हवाई यात्रा के लिए एविएशन फील्ड के लिए विश्व में सबसे ज्यादा अवसर कहीं है तो भारत में बहुत पहले हमारी सोच ये बनी थी कि हवाई यात्रा ने ये राजा महाराजाओं का ही विषय है इतना बड़ा देश है इतनी संभावना है विश्व का ध्यान है एक एविएशन पॉलिसी बनाए कसोटी पर कसे सारे स्टेक होल्डर्स को उसमें विश्वास में ले और नीति के आधार पर इसके एक्सपांसन की एक डिजाइन तैयार करें मुझे खुशी है कि आजादी के बाद पहली बार देश में एविएशन पॉलिसी बनाने का सौभाग्य किया हमारी सरकार को मिला एविएशन को मैं किस रूप में देखता हूँ गरीब व्यक्ति की एक पहचान है वो हवाई चप्पल पहनता है की मैं चाहता हूँ की हवाई जहाज में हवाई चप्पल वाले लोग दिखाई दे और आज ये संभव हो रहा है The scheme was designed to jumpstart the regional aviation market, improving viability of regional air connectivity by making flying affordable for the common populace. Uran 2 focuses on hilly areas in northeastern and island states. Uran 3 focuses on sea planes operations to develop water aerodromes. Uran 4 focuses on shorter routes to facilitate the development of regional hubs. In the last 5 years, Uran has significantly increased the regional air connectivity in the country. There were 74 operational airports in 2014. Because of the Uran scheme, this number has increased to 141 by now. 68 underserved or unserved destinations have been connected under Uran scheme with 4 125 new routes initiated under the scheme Uran has provided air connectivity to more than 29 states and union territories across the length and breadth of the country more than 1 crore passengers have availed the benefits of this scheme as on 4th of august 2022 the scheme has also provided a much needed platform to regional carriers to scale up their operations Uran has played a great role in transformation of Indian aviation industry. This scheme has benefited a diverse set of stakeholders. Passengers have 
have got the benefits of air connectivity. Airlines have received concessions for operating regional routes. Unserved regions have received the direct and indirect benefits of air connectivity for their economic development. Lifeline Uran initiative commenced in March 2020 during COVID-19 period and it helped to operate 588 flights transporting almost 1,000 tons of cargo and essential medical services to various parts of the country. Krishi Uran scheme was launched in August 2020 on international and national routes to assist farmers in transporting agricultural products so that it improves their value realization. Azad Bharat ki baat Akashwani ke saath can be accessed on Twitter at AIR News Alerts, News on AIR official YouTube channel, News on AIR app, Facebook and Instagram handles. So tune in to All India Radio News for Azad Bharat ki baat Akashwani ke saath. Union Information and Broadcasting and Sports and Youth Affairs Minister Anurag Thakur has said that drugs, gang war and crime in Punjab's jails are a matter of concern. Punjab police should be strict about it, he added. The union minister was addressing a press conference at Amritsar after presiding over the 52nd annual sports felicitation function of Guru Nanak Dev University today. Train services have been seriously affected due to an indefinite rail roku agitation by the Kudmi community, the Adivasi Kudmi Samaj and all other Kudmi organizations of West Bengal, Jharkhand and Odisha demanding ST status and inclusion of the Kudumali language in the 8th schedule. In our bilingual live phone-in program on TB Mukt Bharat Ki Pehel under the Swast Bharat series, Dr. Sanjay K. Mattu, Additional Deputy Director General of the Central TB Division, National TB Elimination Program, will be with us tonight to answer queries related to TB elimination and other chest-related diseases. Listeners can ask our expert questions from 9.30 p.m. on telephone number 011-234-21764. You can also post your queries on Twitter at the handle news, AIR News Alerts using hashtag AskAIR. This live program can be heard on FM Gold Channel and additional frequencies from 9.30 p.m. onwards. This program will also be available on our website, newsonair.gov.in and on our YouTube channel, News on AIR Official. On to sports. In cricket, India have set a formidable target of 209 runs before Australia in the first T20 international match of the three-match series being played in Mohale. All-rounder Hardik Pandya, who is in sublime form, scored a quick-fire 71. KL Rahul made 55 runs, while Surikmar Yadav contributed 46 runs. For, Austrian, Nathan Ellis, for Australia, Nathan Ellis claimed three wickets, while Australia won the toss and elected to field. In business news, the Sensex and the Nifty today climbed around 1%. Both indices gained in sync with gains in the global share markets. A report from the business desk. The Sensex rose 579 points to close at 59,720. The Nifty also surged 194 points to end at 17,816. In the Forex market, the rupee appreciated marginally by 2 pesos against the US dollar. The domestic currency closed at 79 rupees and 76 pesos against the American unit. At the multi-commodity exchange, gold futures for October was trading at 49,240 rupees per 10 grams and Brent crude price gained around half a percent. In intraday trade, Brent crude was trading at $92.55 per barrel. Rajesh Schlake for AIR News. And now let's take a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow. The national capital, Delhi, is expected to have a generally cloudy sky with light rain. The minimum temperature will be 25 degrees Celsius, while the maximum will be around 33 degrees. Mumbai may experience rain or thunder showers in the afternoon or evening. Kolkata will have a generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Chennai is expected to have a generally cloudy sky with light rain. Srinagar is expected to have a mainly clear sky becoming partly cloudy towards the afternoon or evening. Leh is expected to have a generally cloudy sky with the possibility of rain or thunderstorm. And now before we close the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi asks BJP mayors to focus on planned urban development, better transport facilities and cleanliness in their cities. India to be driven more and more by digitization of banking and related services, says Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman. 
Road Transport Minister Nitin Gadkari emphasizes maintaining equilibrium between ecology, environment and development in the country. India and Egypt sign MOU to bolster defense cooperation across all sectors of mutual interest. Central Bureau of Narcotics destroys 1,032 hectares of illicit cultivation of cannabis in Himachal Pradesh. UN General Assembly to take decisive action to end spiraling global hunger crisis. And in T20, India set a target of 209 runs before Australia in first T20 international match. And that is the end of this bulletin. Good night.